Okay, so we got magnetic field strength B at distance little b from the center of a circle of radius A carrying current I should be equal to this interval. We obtained that by just doing some excellent, pretty simple, but not trivial uh, vector calculations to get our I delta L vector and our uh, R vector, okay, this I delta L vector and this R vector, and then we found the delta B for that, and we then did the limiting process. Of course, we bypassed the limiting process um, because hopefully we're used to that process, but that's not really, I don't think, the case. We need to uh, maybe practice that a little bit. But we don't have time to teach first year calculus in a physics class. We just have to invoke it. Okay. So, anyhow, but by that process, we obtain this integral, and it's not a, a excruciatingly difficult process. I think this integral is going to be tough to calculate, but it's not as tough as I might have thought. Okay, so maybe it can be amenable. Uh, I'm not going to think about it here on the board. No, you don't want to stand and watch me go catatonic for hours. Um, so. This gives us b as a function of little b. So we could graph big b versus little b. Two things we know. One thing is that at the center of the loop, this result had better darn well agree with the result we get for the center of the loop just doing the straightforward analysis we've done previously, mu naught i over 2a. Okay? Another thing is, uh, that as you approach the loop, the loop starts looking more and more like an infinite straight line. You don't see its curvature, just like, you know, people believe the Earth is flat. Some people actually still want to believe that. Uh, people believe the Earth is flat because um, they don't see the curvature. As you approach the loop, you don't see the curvature, and the loop becomes essentially an infinite straight line carrying for an eye. Meaning that the <coughs> um, current close to the loop is mu naught times i divided by 2 pi times your distance from the loop. Well, your distance from the loop is approaching zero. The, current's gonna, uh, the magnetic field is going to approach infinity. So we have to have a vertical asymptote there. And if this integral doesn't give us that, uh, we're kind of out of luck. Now, maybe I'll do another video where I kind of analyze the integral. You know, if b equals zero, what do you get? Uh, well, you just get a over a squared plus b squared. You get one over a, and you get a two pi times one over a, and k prime is mu naught times two pi, four pi. So uh, you're going to end up with that expression very easily. Just substitute b equals zero. Um, you're just going to get a two pi a out of the integral. Um, of course, then you've got an a here. I'm sorry, it's 2 pi over a. You've got an a here. So. Uh, that still doesn't totally reconcile in my brain, but I'm not going to think about it here again. Um, <coughs> if b equals a, then uh, a is equal, you know, you got an a squared here, an a squared here, you know, minus 2a squared cosine theta here. And you get uh, uh, a times 1 plus cosine theta up here simplifies, and I think that's going to be an integral that's not difficult to do. I have to write it out and see. Um, the question is, what happens between here and your vertical asymptote? Now, what I think happens, and there are ways to analyze it, you know, think about what happens if you move a little ways from the center. I kind of think that the field goes down here a little bit, and there are ways to reason that out, and I might talk about it. But my intuition is that it's going to do this, and then at the very last, it's going to take off. But there's not going to be much area under this sliver here. Even though it goes all the way to infinity, it approaches the asymptote so quickly that it doesn't contribute any significant, uh, not much significant, 
it doesn't contribute an area under the curve of much significance. So that the average magnetic field between here and here, well, you've got to be careful how you calculate that because we're in a plane and stuff. So I'm not going to address that right now. Uh, but you kind of think of a, uh, the integral of a surface revolution here. Uh, and I think maybe I'll go on and make a couple of those connections at least. Okay, well, anyhow, this is going to give us a function, and I don't know. I, I, I probably saw a graph at one point, but I don't remember it. Uh, I just have kind of the intuition that the field is going to kind of decay a little bit as you move away from the origin, that's going to approach infinity. Maybe it goes up and then down. Um, but I don't think so. Okay, well, I'm going to do this integral, and I think I've got to do it numerically because I really don't think this is integrable, but now it's starting to look like maybe it is. Um, I separate it, A over this, plus B cosine theta over this. Uh, there might be techniques where that actually works out. I don't see them in my head. 